G'day, Chris Fawcett from the Headache and Pain Management Center here today, and we are talking about migraines and how they might be caused from the neck. Something that I've spoken about before, but there might be some new information here that we've come across in the last little while that you may not have heard. So stick around and uh, find out the latest in migraine and how the neck is involved. So here's the basics. So migraines and headaches, Basically, they're puppets on the same hand, okay? So we know now with a lot of research in the last 10 years that the back of the neck, top of the, sorry, top of the neck, bottom of the brain, brainstem type area is where all of the nerves go through, get filtered up and channeled up towards the top part of your brain, and that's what tells us where the headaches come from, okay? So all the nerves from your head, your neck, your face, your jaw, your scalp, the blood vessels in your brain, and the fight or flight response all go through the same area. And what happens with a migraine condition is that we think that it gets sensitized in the bottom of that brainstem, okay? So normal input going through that brainstem starts to be interpreted as, if you like, what we call aberrant or um, a little bit skew if, and your brain thinks that there's a threat there that perhaps there isn't. So it sort of has a big fire alarm going off with a piece of toast in the toaster, so to speak. Now, obviously we talk about the triggers a lot in migraine land. We talk about, you know, the foods, the, uh, the wines, the cheeses, the chocolates, the lack of sleep, all of these things that you would have heard before and everyone else say. But today we're talking about the neck specifically and what might be the driver of those migraine conditions coming through. Now when it comes to migraines and what can, you know, what structures of the neck, I suppose, can refer into that brainstem. There's a few different things to look at um, when it comes to that. So the first thing to look at when it comes to uh, the neck's relationship with migraines is the joints, okay? So the top three joints of the neck, you've got OC1 right at the top, you've got one, two just a little bit below, and you've got two, three just below that. Those joints themselves can refer pain into the head, and quite often the location of that pain can give us a hint as to whereabouts that pain can go. So if it's above here, it's more like an O1. If it's behind the eye, it can be more two, three. And quite often there can be a combination of both. If it feels like your head's in a vice, often that tells us it's more O1. So it's really just working out which joint might be the main driver if it is the joints that are causing things. So the first thing we look at here at the clinic is usually joints because that is usually the biggest issue. So that's step number one, looking at the joints of the neck. Number two is the muscles of the neck, okay? And specifically a, a group of muscles in the top part of your neck here that can get overactive, can get tight, and can refer pain into your head. So it's a group of muscles that we call the suboccipitals, okay? And that's Latin for underneath your head, how creative, right? Um, so those suboccipital muscles, they connect up into your skull, they sort of come down into this part of your head here and kind of feels like you can touch the muscles through here. It just feels tender to sort of touch and it, it, it feels like you just want to massage in through here to make things feel better. You quite often see this more of an issue with tension type headaches, but certainly migraines can be driven by that. There's one muscle in particular where migraine seems to be um, you know, indicated, there seems to be a relationship between, and that's a muscle called your inferior oblique muscle, okay? And that connects from the top corner here, just below your skull, back in towards the middle, so down in through here. And that joint, that, sorry, that muscle there actually has a really important function. It has got the highest number of what we call proprioceptors of any muscle in your body. Okay, so it's really important to tell your head where it is in space. Uh, it controls fine movement of that joint that turns side to side, and it even has some connections directly into the outer edge of the spinal cord. That's what we know now. So it's a really important uh, muscle to tell your brain and your head where it is in space. And so if there's an issue with that muscle, um, or it's tight for whatever reason, your brain's instructed that muscle that it needs to be a little bit tight, it can cause the brain to get a bit of a, a weird signal, I suppose, and not sure where it is. So it can cause a lot of dizziness, it can cause a lot of nausea, and it can cause a lot of that feeling of not feeling like you're, you're upright or not feeling like you've got a lot of control over where you are. Like it feels like you're almost standing on a boat sometimes. So that inferior oblique muscle can be indicated with migraine. It's certainly something that we look at here a lot at the clinic. 
The third and final thing when it comes to headaches and migraines coming from the neck is of course the disc, okay? The disc in between C2 and C3. Um, that is the top disc of the neck, okay? And sometimes that disc itself can sensitize that system as well. And what we find when there's an issue with the disc is that it's an issue with the way that you're sitting. So if it's in this position here, you've got a real, what we call forward head posture. What can happen is that we can get you up into a more steady posture like this and strengthen the muscles to hold that in position and that often winds that system down as well. So that disc in between C2 and C3 seems to have a little bit of an issue or a little bit of a relationship, I should say, uh, when it comes to migraine as well. There's usually never just one thing. There's usually a combination of all of them, the muscles, the discs, all the joints. And it's taking a skilled examination to the next level um, to work out what can go on here. Okay, so it takes a really steady hand. It takes a really accurate and really thorough um, sort of examination process, both with the questioning and with the physical assessment to, to find out and establish if the neck is the cause of the issue. One tip for people that might not have seen my videos before is if your headache can be on one side or your migraine can be on one side, it swaps over to the other side day to day, episode by episode, then that is really, really likely that your neck is the cause. So if that's you, um, very likely that the neck is the cause there. So you can call off the search, get your neck assessed, and uh, you know, pretty likely that your neck is gonna be involved. So there's a tip for you for today. Hey, I hope that's been uh, helpful talking about how migraines and the neck uh, are involved with each other to cause uh, that migraine to happen. If there's any questions, please type in the comments below and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as this Facebook Live video is complete because I can't see the comments. We've got the camera pointing forward and uh, Taylor doesn't want to interrupt the video by reading it uh, while they're there on the screen. So we'll get back to you very, very shortly. Hope that's been useful and uh, we'll see you again soon for the next Facebook Live video. Cheers and bye for now.